Hello everyone. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Uh, I hope you guys all had a wonderful weekend. And before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking. And that is my Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in the monogram canvas. And I also want to let you guys know, if you hear buzzing, um, it's so early and my neighbors are going at it with like a table saw or a sander grinder. I have no idea, but it is so, so loud. So if you guys hear it, my apologies. There's nothing I can do, <laughs> uh, but it's driving me crazy. <laughs> so let's get started, shall we? <clears throat> With the very first question from Pixie Love 87 Is it okay to store SLGs in their dust bag inside of a handbag, like my Speedy or Neverfull? I have SLGs inside my bags when not in use and inside uh, my closet. Is that the same thing as them being in a box or are they able to breathe? For reference, my closet door is always open. Uh, this is a great question. Uh, I actually know a lot of people that have their SLGs inside of a handbag when not in use and you are fine. As long as they're not in a box, you are good to go and uh, you should they, they should be able to breathe uh, fine. Uh, Posh Hippie had a similar question. Uh, I keep my Chanel Jumbos in their dust bags and inside their box, inside a drawer in my closet island. Is that okay? Where can we find your private sales? XOXO. Um, <clears throat> this is definitely something that you want to try to avoid. You want to take uh, any handbags or SLGs that you have inside of a box, uh, take them out so that the leather is able to breathe. Because uh, what happens is that the box ends up trapping in all that moisture and it could either cause it to smell like mildew uh, or it can cause the leather to crack. So obviously you want to avoid that at all costs. So I would definitely suggest taking it out of the dust or taking it out of the box. You can leave it in the drawer, um, but personally I would rather have it in an open space where the leather can just, where the, the handbag can just stay, you know, uninterrupted, not having to worry about what if, you know, what if something happens to the leather? What if something happens to this? So just leave it out if you can in an open space, but if not, just take it out of the dust, out of the box and leave it in the dust bag um, so that nothing happens to it. <clears throat> And as far as my private sales, uh, my private sales are amongst my clients, but I do have a, uh, an Instagram sale page, which is a luxury love. And I have the details down below and I, uh, usually post some items on there from time to time. So if you guys ever see something you like, just shoot me an email and not everything is just domestic only. Uh, I do ship internationally. It just depends on the item. So just shoot me an email if you guys see something. Uh, okay. Nicholas Humphrey. <clears throat> Now that summer is here, what is your take on using Damier Ben canvas for the summer months? I know some people think it's a winter print due to the dark brown. Thoughts? Uh, you know, as much as, well, you guys know, I love Damier Azure for uh, spring and summer months, but I, I honestly think that Damier Ben is a great, great option for year round, especially for the summer months, because... You know, I don't know about where you guys live. When, where I live, it gets so hot. Sometimes it's so muggy and humid and you just feel sticky. And, you know, if you have a bag that has Vaquetta on it, it can get, uh, you know, it can get kind of dingy from, from the sweat. I know it's kind of, it sounds gross, but uh, let's be honest, you know, and, um, it can get dingy from the sweat. It can get, uh, a darker patina, an, an even patina with humidity. It all, you know, it, everything factors in. So when you have a Damia Ben, uh, canvas bag, you don't have to worry about anything. It is so carefree. And I, I think it's a great idea to use Damia Ben for the summer months. You know, you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about water stains. You don't have to worry about sweat. You don't have to worry about vaquera at all. So I always say it's a good idea. But having said that, I am always, <laughs> I am always, you know, going towards my Dami Azor pieces to use, even with the crazy weather that we get where I live. So uh, I do think it's a great idea and I should take my own advice, but I, there is just something about Dami Azor in the summer months that just kind of makes my heart sing. Uh, okay, next question. Uh, DM, you have said before that you cheat on your sales associates. Are they aware? Because I do the same thing, but two of the sales associates work in two different sacks in different states, but one of them found out that I was asking the other sales associate for an item. Because I originally asked the other one, she said there were none in the system. The same day I asked the other SA, she says that there's one left, so I ordered from her. <clears throat> the other sales associate found out and dumped me, dumped me as a client because she says she only likes having clients that only deal with her and no one else. 
I don't want to mention names because I know a few subbies have her as a sales associate. I understand essays want to have an exclu want to have exclusive clients, but I think they should tell a potential client this in the beginning instead of dumping them later on. Your thoughts, please. Oh my goodness. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so where do I start? Uh, yes, I do cheat on my sales associates. And are they aware? 100% they are aware. Um, you know, uh, living in California, I have three different sales associates here in the state. And I have a few others in different states. But... Um, you know, if, if I head down to San Diego, then if I bought something from someone in Orange County, they'll say, oh, did, did, did I sell that to you? I'm like, oh, no, I got it in Orange County. Or if it happens in San Francisco or whatever it is, they'll notice that I didn't go to them for the item, right? And I'm very, very open with them, you know? And I'll say, no, uh, so-and-so got it for me from, from South Coast. Um, but, you know, first and foremost, I understand 100% that Sales associates want to have exclusive clients. I get that. And they only want clients to go to them. However, they have so many different clients that it would be impossible to be able to cater to all of them and get all of them everything that they need. There's just no way that's going to happen, especially if a sales associate has a hundred different clients. And let's say 50 of those clients want the same item and there's only one in the system. You know what I mean? Um, but what it, I mean, what it sounds like to me is that the one sales associate said that there wasn't any in the system and the other one said that there was, so you ordered from her, right? So this, the first sales associate sounds like they're not doing, they're not doing their job. They're not going above and beyond to try to find that item for you. Now, whether they found out that you had another sales associate, so they just stopped helping you out in general, then I don't know about you, but I don't want someone like that as my sales associate. You know, I have noticed that some of mine even when I tell them, oh no, I got it from someone so or I got it here, they end up trying they end up going a little bit further at that moment whenever I'm with them and they try to to make it so I only go to them, you know, and they'll they'll go above and beyond and they'll say, Hey Minnie, I found this. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? It seems like when they find out I cheat on them, they go above and beyond to try to keep me as their sole client, you know, and uh, I appreciate that, you know, but in all honesty, if, if you're trying to find an item and that one sales associate can't find it because they're busy helping out other clients, then it only sounds fair to me to find another sales associate who can locate the item that you're looking for. You know, and I get it, as I said before, that they want to be exclusive and they want to have, you know, just you, they only want to have you as a client and vice versa. You only have them as a sales associate, but it just, it doesn't make sense to me. And for them to just drop you, it just sounds like they're throwing a hissy fit, like they're butt hurt because you didn't just go to them. No, that, that makes no sense, you know, but, um, as I told you guys in the beginning, or as I've told you guys in other, uh, mixed Mondays, I, yes, I cheat on them all the time and they all know it. Uh, and I feel that they still, even with them knowing that, I don't solely go to them. They still give me such exceptional service. And that's what means the world to me. And I currently have <clears throat> two sales associates that I absolutely love. And I end up going uh, to them for anything that I can try to find. Uh, one of them, one of my very good friends shared with, uh, shared, shared the, their details with me or his, their details, the sales associates details with me. And, uh, the other one, uh, she's just, she's just a dream. She's awesome. And I'll tell her, Hey, I asked so-and-so if they can find it for me and they couldn't, is there anything that you can do for me? She's like, yeah, 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 absolutely. So the fact that they try to go above and beyond, the fact that they still give you 100%, at least it seems like that to me, that, that makes me happy, you know, and I will end up going back to those same sales associates. But if those two can't find it for me, then I will go somewhere else because I really want to find that item before a price increase, before I can't find it, before it's completely sold out. But, um, I just, I cannot believe that. I cannot believe that. Now, if they would have kept their thoughts to themselves and not known that they dropped you as a client, then maybe that's different. You know, um, what you don't know, I guess, won't hurt you. But for them to make it that obvious, I think that that is absolutely unprofessional. No, it makes no sense to me. I don't know. If you guys have had something like this happen, let us know in the comment section down below. Uh, but yeah, that just, that blows my mind. Uh, okay. Uh, Lynn Sin Osafi, Lynn Sin Osafi, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Uh, what bag, preferably crossbody, would you recommend to carry alone 
for two sets of keys, phones, and wallets that could also be stuffed into another bag, i.e. a diaper bag. Um, there's a f there's three different ones that I can think of. Uh, one that you would have to add a strap to, which is the Pusha Asesuar. I talked about that in the previous Minx Monday. Very simple. It still has quite a bit for storage, and it's not too fussy of a bag. Uh, the Eva Clutch is another good option. It's a little bit smaller than the Pusha Asesuar, but still it's able to fit inside of a diaper bag uh, very easily, and it comes with... it's there. All these bags are very, very versatile. They come with an extra body strap for crossbody uh, to be able to use on your shoulder, or you can take off the removable strap and just use them as a little handbag. And the other one I would have to say is the Palas Clutch. Um, I think all three of those are great options. They have enough space to be able to put the items that you are looking for. Uh, the Palace, I believe, retails for $1,100 here in the States. The Eva Clutch, how much is the Eva Clutch? Is it $775 or is it $800 and something? I can't remember. And then the Pochette Accessoire is uh, the least expensive out of the out of the three. And then you just have to add the, uh, the strap. But regardless, I think all three of those would work. That's what I would end up doing. Um, because of the versatility, obviously, you want to to be able to use it in many different uh, ways if you had to when you put it inside your diaper bag. So that's what I would recommend. <clears throat> uh, okay, Marika Bareka. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I would love to have your suggestion. Last year, I bought my first Louis Vuitton bag, but woo! <laughs> the Neverfull and Dami Azor. Now I want the Speedy 25, but I can't decide between the classic style or the bandolier. I love my Neverfull. I use it every day, but I'm afraid that if I buy the bandolier, I, I won't use the Neverfull anymore. I don't like crossbody, so I would use the Speedy B on my shoulder. Um, if you're not, I think the biggest selling point on the Speedy Bandolier is the fact that you can use it crossbody and be completely hands-free. Obviously, if you have a bag on your shoulder, you're still hands-free, but when you have it crossbody, it's just a little bit more, um, I think it's a little bit more user-friendly, and I keep saying that over and over again in all my videos. Sorry. Uh, but if you're not a fan of the bandolier and you would only use it as your shoulder bag, you already have a shoulder bag in the Neverfull, so I personally would suggest the Classic Speedy. Uh, that way you have a top handle bag and a shoulder bag, so you have a little bit of a variety, uh, but that's what I would end up doing because... Um, if you're not going to use it crossbody, like I said before, I think that's the biggest selling point of a speedy bandolier. Uh, so if you're not going to use it that way, yes, you can use it as a shoulder bag, but again, you already have the Neverfull, so I would just go for the classic. Personally, in my opinion, that's what I would end up doing. Um, Victoria Bryant. With the jumbo on my radar, I was thinking about price increases and my desire to avoid it. I am saving to buy the bag, but when do you suggest at the latest I purchase the bag to avoid a price increase? Okay, so with Chanel, it is always so, so hard, or actually any fashion house and their, um, and their price increases, because how long here in the States have we been hearing that there is going to be a price increase on Chanel? I think you know, I've heard it from so many different people. I've heard it from so many different sales associates. When I go to visit uh, boutiques, they're just like, oh, you should get it now because next week is the price increase and nothing, you know, and knowing my luck, it'll be the time that I walk away from it. They'll be telling me the truth and then it'll, there'll be this massive increase. So what I would suggest, I would just, um, get the bag as soon as possible. Um, Obviously, we don't know. It could be four days from now. It could be four weeks from now. It could be four months from now. Who knows? But the more you wait, the more you'll you'll worry about, you know, the price increase, the price increase, and the added pressure about it. So if you just want to get that out of your head, get that out of your mind, I would just go, um, I would just go ahead with purchasing it now so that you don't have that, you don't have that, you know, it's that feeling like, oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You know what I mean? So that's what I would do. Um, I know I was, uh, what was it? What did I purchase? I don't remember what item I purchased, but the sales associate, uh, was like, oh, it's going to happen next week. This isn't one of my, my normal, my regulars. And I was like, oh really? Oh, okay. Then it kind of pushed me a little bit more to get it. It has been five months since I got it and still no price increase, you know? And I think for like the first three weeks, I ended up going onto the website to see if it had increased and nothing, nothing. So <laughs> it drove me mad. It, I was like, uh, I was obsessed with that price increase. So I just say, just if you can get it, get it out of the way. <laughs> 
Okay, next question. Uh, Zeno85. Just ordered my first Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in a Damier Ben canvas from the website. Congratulations. Uh, when I opened it up, first thing I noticed was a chemical smell, almost like paint remover. Is that normal? Also, it says made in the U.S. I thought they were made in Europe. Uh, okay, so first things first. Recently, Louis Vuitton changed the solution, uh, the coating solution, uh, so that the items, the canvas items, wouldn't have more of, wouldn't be a little bit more uh, prone to cracking as they were in the past. So they do have that very, it's a very, very pungent smell. And I've noticed it the most on Speedies, classic Speedies, Speedy Bandoliers, and Neverfulls, where you open up the, the bag or the box and you're just like, oh my goodness, this is so, so strong. But it definitely does go away. So if you let, the item sit and air out it'll it'll go away and the and you shouldn't have any problems with it um and louis vuitton is a french company however they have multiple factories around the world where they do and where they do construct items in those factories from the imported materials from france so it's still especially here in the u.s we have a cloth tag or we have a uh, a little uh, what's it called? The leather tab that says made of imported materials. So that's all it is. Um, but no, all the items come from France and then they're just made in different factories around the world. Uh, you know, such as Italy, uh, here in the States, which is in California and then Spain. Um, but yeah, so hopefully that smell goes away, but you should be fine. But congratulations on your very, very first Louis Vuitton. That is so exciting. Okay, oat dad or hot dad, what do you think about Bali bags and SLGs? If that's a bit vague, I was thinking most about the Eclipse and the Somme belt bags. Um, I think Bali bags in general have fantastic, fantastic quality. The leather is amazing and they definitely don't get as le as much love as I think that they should. Um, and they have really great price points. So sometimes you'll find them for around, I, I believe the Eclipse, the small Eclipse retails for approximately $2,000, but you can find it on sale for, I think it was 1500 or 1700 that, that I saw. And the Somme belt bag retails for around the same price, but you can also find that on sale. Uh, but I think they're kind of fun. Personally, I prefer the regular Somme bag, not the belt bag, but just Bali bags in general are just gorgeous. They have beautiful leather. Some of their silhouettes are a little funky. They're a little too out there for my personal taste. But from what I have heard, people have said that they hold I mean, that they hold up incredibly well. And uh, the leather, I just cannot get over the quality of their leather. It kind of reminds me of the Celine leather. You know, it's just that soft, beautiful, pebbled leather that you just cannot get enough of. So I'm, I'm a fan. Uh, not per se those two uh, specific styles, but in general, I think that they have an awesome, awesome um, quality for, for their handbags. Okay. MWY Tom, my Chanel sales associate, said that they were expanding into materials such as goat skin and calf skin. What are your thoughts on durability and wearability on the other materials? I'm white listed for this fall's wallet on chain and goat, and I'm wondering if it will be as carefree as caviar. Uh, okay, so here I brought out my Chanel Le Boy bag in the new medium size, and this is in black calf skin leather with the double stitching. And I would have to say that's maybe, I wouldn't say it's as 100% carefree as caviar. However, it has held up incredibly well. Because of the calfskin leather, it seems that it hides any scratches if there were to have any. I honestly don't see any, but I wouldn't be able to, to really tell because of how awesome the, uh, the calfskin is and how beautifully it's held up. It seems like it has a little bit more of a distressed look, but that's just the look of the way that they, that they made this leather. Um, but I haven't had any issues and I would have to say it's definitely a little bit more carefree than say lambskin or patent leather. And I'm really, really liking it. The goat skin to me tends to have a little bit more of a, of a sheen to it, a little bit more of a shininess to the leather. And I have heard the same thing that it's going to hold up just as well as the calfskin is. So for me, obviously the ultimate carefree in Chanel, it, for my, in my opinion anyways, is caviar leather. And then I would have to say that calfskin and goatskin are right under there. 
So as I said before, this is calfskin. I've had no issues with it whatsoever. And I'm just, those little lines that you see are just my blinds because they're open. Uh, but it, yeah, it just, it's great, great quality. And I'm, I'm really happy that they're adding a lot more bags in the goat skin and the calf skin so that they have a little bit more durability. So 100% durable. I think I've had the bag now. When did I purchase my LaBoy bag? I think it was June last year or was it July? So it's, I've had it almost a year and I've used it quite often and I still haven't had a single scratch on it. So I am all for the calf skin. Uh, but like I said before, the goat skin has a little bit more of that shininess to it that I'm not too attracted to. Uh, okay. Krista Thompson. I'm thinking about purchasing a Neverfull GM in Dami Azor for summer, but I wear a lot of black for work and I'm concerned about color transfer. Have you had any issues with your Dami Azor items? Uh, I've had this question a few times and I haven't had any I haven't had any color transfer whatsoever with any of my handbags. Uh, I've had more so problems with my SLGs just being inside of a Damia Ben bag or in my Celine. I put them in there once and it made the it made the color kind of funky on the corners of the SLGs. But no, I haven't had any issues whatsoever with the Damia Zor. And I wear tons and tons of black, especially um, black shirts. But... I wouldn't say that it's impossible, that it wouldn't happen, you know, it wouldn't happen that you would get color transfer, um, especially with jeans or th something like that. So if something has a very saturated dye in it, it doesn't necessarily have to be black. There's a, there's a higher chance that it'll end up rubbing up against the canvas and then you will get that color transfer. So, um, I would just be very, very careful with it. But if you don't want to be careful about the bag whatsoever, and you just want to be able to wear it and enjoy it without having to think of color transfer, you might want to go for a different, um, a different print. But like I said before, I haven't had any issues whatsoever with any of my Demi Azor pieces and I wear black all the time. Um, and I've just been very, honestly, it, it seems like just pure dumb luck that nothing has happened to it, not even on the bottom. And I don't baby this bag whatsoever. This bag, I kind of throw around and I don't treat it <laughs> as well as I should. And I still haven't had any issues. So, um, I mean, it's definitely something to think about, but if the bag makes your heart sing that I would just go for it and I would just be a little bit, um, you know, just look at the dye and how saturated the, the, the clothing is and then go from there. But if it makes your heart sing, then go for it, you know? And, um, but it's definitely something to think about. Next question from Charlotte Tyson. I am more of a tote girl like you, and I own a Louis Vuitton Batignol shoulder bag in the monogram. I love the way it's more horizontal and not too deep when you put your hand in it to find an item. I am looking at the Louis Vuitton Respi PM. Sadly, I know they have discontinued it. I was wondering what your thoughts are on this bag and what other Louis Vuitton bags you recommend on the shape I am wanting. Uh, okay, so the Respi, I am a huge fan of it. I think it's a beautiful tote, very simple, has a zipper uh, closure. And I like the fact that, again, you can see everything at a glance. There are three other ones that I have looked at before in the past, and I think I appreciate them more than other designs for a, like a tote style. Um, and... If you're wanting something in the collection right now, these are the three that I was looking at. The first one is the Palace. The Palace is the only thing I don't like about it, and you guys know, is the fact that it comes with an extra shoulder strap, uh, removable shoulder strap. But I like its shape. I love the silhouette, and I like the fact that it's not too deep. It has versatility, and you can open it up and again see everything at a glance. So that is one that I really, really like. Another one that I am just fascinated with. <laughs> I don't know what it is about this bag. Again, it comes with a removable shoulder strap. It is. A, it also has, you know, the option to be used as a top handle bag. It's the Montaigne MM, especially in the mon in the Emprunt uh, leather. There is something about that bag. And it, every time I see it on Instagram from my very, very good friend, me and Mr. Vuitton, I want that bag. I just love how, number one, whether you get it in in canvas or whether you get it in the emprunt leather, it keeps its shape. It holds its shape. It has a divider. So it has uh, compartments. You're able to see everything at a glance and it has that added versatility. That is another major, major win for me anyways. So it's a little bit different from the other styles that you were looking at, but 
I just like how open it is. So that's, that's why that's another one of my choices. And another one that I saw, even though I'm not a fan of the print, I do like the shape of the bag and I like, um, the style that it has and it is a shoulder bag. So it doesn't come with an additional, you know, removable strap is the Kesa. And that's in the Demi, uh, a Ben pattern. And I, like I said before, I don't like the way that some of them are horizontal and some of them are vertical. It looks a little funky, but I, there's just something about it. It reminds me of a Saleya bag that was also discontinued. And it also reminds me of a totally MM, uh, because of how, how long the shoulder, um, the shoulder straps are. And it just seems like it would be very, very comfortable. So that's maybe one that to look at, but if those three don't sound like something that would be, you know, up your alley, then I would definitely go for the rest by. It's just a beautiful bag, very simple. And I, again, I really like it. I love, I love that bag and I really wish they wouldn't have discontinued it. So that's what I would end up doing. Uh, okay. And last question from Deborah Gagliato. Can you tell me more why you love your Chanel wallet on chain? I'm thinking about getting one, but cannot decide yet. Okay. So here I brought one of my babies out and this is the Chanel wallet on chain in the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. Why am I so crazy about these? The reason why I'm so crazy about them is because I can go compact, but not too compact to the point where I can't carry anything. Uh, and I like how comfortable they are to wear because sometimes when it comes to smaller crossbody bags, some of the chains end up bothering me or some of the leather ends up bothering me. It ends up digging into my shoulder. It ends up just being very, very uncomfortable. And I feel that with these chains here, even though they have metal and they are, you know, they have leather throughout them, they are just so incredibly comfortable. I love how sleek it is. I like the fact that it doesn't take up too much space. It's not bulky. I'm um, it's, it's very close up against my body. And I don't know, it's just, it's just wonderful. And it looks like it might carry, you know, just a lipstick, but I like the fact also that it doesn't have, I don't have to carry another wallet with me because of the added credit card slots. So I am a huge, huge fan of the wallet on chain. It's one of my favorite, all time favorite pieces from Chanel. And, um, I, you know, I'm crazy about it, but it's not for everybody. There are a few people that don't like it at all. They don't like how small it is. They don't like the fact that you can't carry too much in here. You know, um, you definitely have to go a little bit more, uh, a little bit more compact. I wouldn't say extreme compact because I could still carry the items, uh, in here that I absolutely need, but still some people just, um, need a little bit more and that's, you know, that's perfectly fine. But for me, it, this is just one of my all time favorites. Just so simple, not too much, not fussy. And you guys know how I feel about fussy bags. I don't like something that's going to be all over the place or too bulky when I'm trying to get through a crowded area or something like that. No way. I like something a little bit slimmer, a little bit slender that I can just move around with ease. So that's why I'm such a big fan. <laughs> Plus everything else that I mentioned. Uh, but yes, that does it for our Minx Money q and I hope you guys enjoyed this week. Um, and it seems like Yes, my neighbors finally stopped, of course, after the video is over. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I was able to help and I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.